Here we are at the command line, and the command that we want to explore is the .NET publish command. I'm going to pass in the help flag so we can see what options are available here. And you'll notice that many of the options for the command line map to options that we just saw in the Visual Studio UI. So the ability to specify an output directory and a target framework and a runtime identifier and a configuration. And that's because behind the scenes, what Visual Studio is doing is really using .NET Publish in the background. So let's try to publish our application. I am inside of the same folder as my odafu.cs project file. So the main project that is the web application. And what I want to do is a .NET publish operation. And I'm only going to pass along one option to start with. I'm just going to specify the output directory, so dash O. Let's place the publish output into a folder in my temp folder. And let's place it into C temp O to food. When I press enter, .NET publish will make sure that all the NuGet packages are restored. It will make sure that everything is built to the latest version with the source code that is on the disk here. And then it's going to take everything that I need and publish it into the C temp O to food folder. Let's take a look at that folder and see what is inside. So scrolling up here, the first thing you'll notice is that there's a number of assembly files in here, so .dll files. These assemblies represent dependencies that .NET Publish found for my application, dependencies that are not part of the target framework. So we do not need the DLL files that represent .NET Core itself, but we do need the DLL files that we might have referenced through NuGet packages, for example, odecode.usenode modules, because those DLLs might not be on the target system when we deploy. You'll also notice the assemblies are here from the other projects that the web application references, so odefu.core and odefu.data. I also want to point out that our app setting files have been published into this folder, both the development and the production file. I also want to point out that odefu.views.dll exists here. So any Razor view that is in the project or any Razor page that is in the project is compiled and packaged up into a DLL, much like our regular c -sharp code is packaged up into odefu.dll. So you will not find a pages folder here in the published output. Instead, all of our views and pages are compiled into this binary. You will also find, as I scroll down a little bit, a web.config file, we're going to come back and talk about that one later, and a www root folder. So all of our static content that existed inside of www root in the project has been copied over to this folder. And that means any images that we need are here in the published folder, so when we deploy, those images will be available on the hosting server. Also, any JavaScript files and CSS files, the entire www root folder from the project was copied over. Now, you might remember there's another folder that contains static assets like JavaScript files that we need, at least if we're running in a development environment and that is the node underscore modules folder. That folder is currently not here inside of this published output folder. I'm going to show you how to fix that. Of course, we typically only use node modules when we're in development, not in production, but it would be a good idea to have node modules available here in this published output, and I will show you how to do that before we leave the module. For right now, what I want to show you is if I push the current directory onto the stack and switch over into the ode to food directory, what I want to show you is that we used to run a project in this course by saying .NET run, but .NET run assumes that you're in a folder with a CS project file. Something you'll notice that is missing from this published output is any of the source code files. So there is no program.cs or startup.cs or csproj file. All of the c -sharp code has been compiled into a DLL. So then the question is, if we cannot use .NET run, how do we launch the application from the command line like we used to? Well, I still use the .NET CLI, but now I can specify the name of the assembly that I want to execute. And what .NET will do is load up that assembly, look for the entry point, which we know is the static main method, and then start executing the code inside. So if I try this here, we're actually going to end up with an error. And if I scroll up, I will show you that the error actually is because the node underscore modules folder does not exist. We load up that use node modules middleware regardless of what environment that we're in, development or production. So that middleware is always going to be looking to use the node underscore modules folder, and if it doesn't exist, that middleware is going to throw an exception and our application fails to launch. Now, it would be possible from this folder just to run an npm install because the npm package.json file was included in the published output. 
So if I ran an npm install here, npm would look inside of package.json, see that I have a dependency on jQuery and Bootstrap and jQuery validation, would create the node underscore modules folder and install all those packages. Then I could run the application and it would be happy. But running npm install by hand from the command line, typically not something that you want to do if you're going to automate your build. So let me just show you a few quick steps that you can take to make sure that the npm install always happens so that the node modules content is published into the output folder.